Hello, today we're going to talk about voltage controlled amplifiers or VCAs. We will be exploring what VCAs are, how they work, and how to use them from basic use cases to more creative ones. Let's take a quick peek at what's to come. First things first, what exactly is a VCA? As I mentioned before, VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. It allows us to control the amplitude of a signal using voltage. For an audio signal, that means controlling its volume. Despite the name amplifier, in practice, they are more akin to an attenuator. They basically work as a CV controlled volume knob of sorts. Let's take a look at this on a scope. So here we have a sawtooth coming out of this oscillator. If I pass it through a VCA and get the output of this VCA on the scope in blue and listen to this sawtooth out of the VCA, then we can see the blue line is just slightly amplified from the original green signal. And I can use that knob on this VCA to attenuate the blue trace there, all the way to zero. And we can also hear that the volume of this signal is getting attenuated with this knob. Now, if I take a static offset out of this and pass it through the scope in red there, so we can see the level of that CV, and get it into the CV input of the VCA, then I can control the amplitude of that attenuation through CV. One of the most common ways to use a VCA is to pair it with an envelope generator. This allows us to shape the sound for a specific note, creating different dynamics in that I can release times. So here we have a very similar setup, except that I unplugged the offset coming in red there. And in yellow, we have gates coming out of pans. Now, if with those gates, I trigger an envelope here and use this envelope, which will appear in red, to control the VCA, then we see the blue trace, which is the output of our VCA, being controlled in terms of amplitude by that envelope in red. Now, if I change the shape of the envelope, the shape of our blue waveform will follow the shape of that envelope. It's important to note that VCAs are not just for audio signals. They can be used to modulate CV as well, which can add interesting variations and movement to patches. They can be used as attenuators on a CV signal, for example, but that attenuator can also be CV controlled itself. So here in green, we have an LFO that's coming out of here, displayed in green on the trays, going through VCA, and the output is all displayed in red. Now, if I take another LFO with a faster frequency, um, I'm going to pass it through there to have, to have it attenuated and offset. So it's always positive and also never reaches zero. And use this to modulate through the VCA my first LFO. Then in red, we have a sort of combination of the two LFOs following the shape of the green, which is the first one, but with an attenuation that's from the second one at a higher frequency. And so we have this kind of tremolo effect on the LFO. So in this one, in blue, we still have 
a high frequency LFO that's attenuated and offset, so it's just a tiny modulation. In green we have a sequence coming out of a sequencer, it's just a random sequence, um, going through the VCA, and right now you're hearing it going through that oscillator here, you're hearing just a sawtooth. Now, if I take the LFO in blue and use that to modulate the sequence coming out of the sequencer through the VCA, then you can hear that it adds some sort of tremolo effect on every single note. When choosing a VCA for modulation, keep in mind that not every VCA is equal. Some have a linear response, while others have more exponential response. Humans perceive sound in a more exponential manner, so exponential VCAs will sound more natural. For CV, a linear response might be more desirable as it might be closer to what you're expecting. With that said, a linear VCA can behave like an exponential one if the control CV itself that you're controlling it with is exponential. For example, if you have an exponential envelope. For more creative usages of a VCA, an easy one is ring modulation. It allows us to modulate the VCO with another VCO. This allows for some pretty unique wave shapes. In this patch we have a sawtooth coming out of this VCO, getting in data in blue, out of data into this VCA, which is currently not modulated, out of this VCA back in data in green, which because it's not modulated is currently the same waveform, and the output of the VCA is also what you can hear right now. We also have a second VCO, which is currently outputting a triangle and getting in data in red. Now, if I use this triangle to modulate the first waveform, we get a very different one. You can also change the waveform used in the first one, giving more interesting results. Hold on a minute, this guy is talking nonsense. This isn't ring modulation. See, when the modulator in red goes into negative, the resulting waveform in green is flat at zero volt. In true ring modulation, it should be inverted instead, producing a more interesting waveform. Some VCAs will handle negative voltages in their level input, producing that kind of result. But none of the ones I have do, so I can't easily show you a true ring modulation. This is fairly similar, but not the same. All right, back to the video now. Another interesting use case is as a crossfader. By using a mixer and two VCAs modulated by the same CV, with one of them inverted and offset, it's easy to crossfade between two sound sources. So here we have two different sound sources. First one in green, and second one in blue. Now, this specific VCA has a mix feature built in, which means that it's able to mix all of its outputs into a single one. So if I turn the both of them on, you can hear both of them. Now, in addition to that, I also have just a static voltage that I can control through this knob here in red. Increase it, lower it, or set it back to zero. Now, if I take this voltage and I'm going to pass it through a mold here because I'm going to need it twice and use that same voltage to control the first sound source from the VCA. I'm going to turn this back on and then use this knob to control the level of our first sound source. Now, what I really need right now for the second output to crossfade between the two is just an inverse of that. And so I can get that through this module, which allows me to attenuate, invert, or offset signals. And so that's what I see here in yellow. So if I increase our initial voltage in red, you can hear the first sound source coming in, and the second voltage in yellow is coming down, just the invert of the red one. And same thing, if I get the red one into negative, then we can see the yellow one going into positive. Now, if I use this, inverted voltage to control our second sound source and then turn that on. I can use this knob to switch between the two. If I have a positive value then I'll hear the first one more and if I have a negative value then I'll start hearing the second one more. Um, for crossfading, so to have some sort of overlap, I can just offset the yellow one a little bit 
and now if I decrease the value I can only hear first the third sorry the second sentence and if I go the other way I have an overlap between the two in the middle and I can control that overlap with the offset here. The higher the offset the, the larger the overlap Building on this, it's easy to duck a signal when another one is triggered, achieving a sort of sidechain compression. So here we have two different sound sources again, some noise and a sine wave, and an envelope that's being triggered by PAM that you can see here in green. Now I'm going to use this envelope twice, I'm going to melt it, and I'm first going to use it to control the volume of our noise, creating some percussive sound. I'm also going to use it to control the volume of our sine wave, but through an inversion as we did just before. So I'm going to display the inverted value in blue. Here we go. And I'm going to use the inverted to control the sound of our sign. And so we can hear the sign ducking to leave place to the percussive sound. Stereo signals can add an extra dimension to your music, but they can also be a bit tricky to work with in Eurorack. Unlike mono signals, stereo ones require by nature two distinct signal paths. In this context, that specifically means two VCAs, one for the left channel and one for the right. Keeping both at the same level can be a challenge. So this section being about stereo, it will make much more sense if you're using headphones or good stereo speakers. So we have here an envelope triggered by PAM that you can see in yellow, as well as Vertex, which is a stereo VCA. So being a stereo VCA, it has the left and right inputs, which right now are connected to different wave shapes, as well as left and right outputs, which is what you're listening to right now. So if I use this envelope to open the VCA, then you start hearing the two waves, one in the left and one in the right channel. Being a stereo VCA, it has interesting features like panning. Now, if you don't have a stereo VCA, you can still manage a stereo signal. The first option that you can use is using a VCA with um, pass-through on the CB control. So if I'm using this first and second channel of the quantum sampler by noise engineering and open the channel there. The way this VCA works is that if no CV control is connected down the line, it will normalize to the first one. So if I connect a second cable, even if it's not connected to anything, there it breaks the normalization and we can only hear the effect of the envelope on the left channel so we can't hear the second channel. Now if you don't have a VCA that works in that way you can still make do with just a mount. So if I'm using the tangle port that we were using at the beginning and passing through our two sound sources the only thing that we really need to do is multiplying our envelope and passing it to the two channels. And we achieve pretty much the same result. We obviously don't have an easy stereo padding, but as we used before, the cross padding patch can be used to achieve a similar result if that's something you're after. And there you have it, a brief overview of what you can do with VCAs. They are versatile and powerful tools that can be used in a variety of creative ways. As the saying goes, you can never have too many VCAs. Of course, we've only scratched the surface of what VCAs can do and there's so much more to explore. So if you have any questions or 
comments about what we've covered or if you have any suggestions for other topics you'd like me to explore in future videos, please leave them in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ideas and feedback and I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, keep experimenting and I'll see you in the next one.